covalent bonds where there's a significant difference in electronegativity. We sometimes say that these bonds are dipole bonds. So one end of the bond is electron deficient, feels mildly positive. One end of the bond is electron enriched. And that atom, the electron enriched end, is slightly negative. Now sometimes when we have dipole bonds, Sometimes these dipole bonds converge in one direction. The sum of the vectors of these bonds all gravitates towards one side of the molecule. So it's not just one single chemical bond which is polarized. If those dipoles are working together in one general direction, it makes one side of the entire molecule electron enriched and one side electron deficient. So we say that the entire molecule becomes polarized or is a dipole molecule. We often say that there's a dipole moment in the molecule. There's momentum in that shift in electron density. Okay. So, a molecule can't be a dipole molecule if it doesn't have a dipole bond. It must at least have one dipole bond. As we'll see shortly, sometimes those dipoles can actually cancel each other out. But as long as it has exactly one dipole bond, the entire molecule will be a dipole polarized molecule. An example like water has two dipole bonds, the oxygen to hydrogen bond. The oxygen, more electronegative, so the electrons, as we show with dipole arrows, the electrons are shifting towards the oxygen from these two directions, and the lone pairs of the oxygen also help to make it more electron enriched. Most of the electrons in this molecule are tied up on this one side of the molecule. So we have a dipole moment, which we can show, which goes from the hydrogen feet on one side of the molecule through to the oxygen on the other side gives us a dipole molecule because most of the electron density is on this side and the electron deficient side is on the other side of the molecule. It's because of that non-linear shape it makes one half of the molecule electron enriched and one half electron deficient. Likewise, molecule like chloromethane. We've got a tetrahedral structure around that central carbon atom and there are three bonds which are non-polar. The difference in thickness here is just a small three-dimensional effect on the page. This bond shown thicker is a perspective thing. This bond coming out of the page towards you, getting closer. And this bond dashed is trying to represent something down the road, just fading away into the distance. So this hydrogen is back into the board. Just trying to show those three legs of the tetrahedral structure in a three-dimensional kind of pose. These three bonds are non-polar. The difference in electronegativity between the atoms is less than 0.5. They're sharing the electrons evenly. But the carbon to chlorine bond is a polar covalent bond. It has a dipole bond and it generates a dipole moment where the lion's share of the electrons in this molecule are tied up on one side. So we can see with these three hydrogen to nitrogen bonds, when you look at the table of electronegativities, remember you've been given that, there's a large difference in electronegativity. I think it's 0.9. So the electrons in each bond are actually focused and moving towards the nitrogen. The hydrogen still has a, a piece of the pie, but it doesn't have a very big piece. It has a relatively small piece compared to the nitrogen. So most of these electrons are drawn towards the nitrogen. The bonds are polarized. And a picture shows that each of these individual bonds where that dipole, where the polarization is running to. Running to the more electronegative atom. And a little S or Greek delta symbols are telling us for each of these atoms whether they are electron deficient in delta plus or electron enriched in delta negative. So these delta negatives are all about the nitrogen on the electron enriched end of the bond. 
So when we look at the molecule, there's the blue nitrogen in the middle, and there's a lone pair on the top. All the electrons are moving towards the nitrogen. This top half of the molecule has most of the electron density. Meanwhile, the hydrogen feet on one clear lower side of the molecule, there isn't much electron density connected with those hydrogens because the electrons are being pulled away. So we can cut the molecule in two and see there's an electron enriched side on the top side and an electron deficient side on the bottom side. Dipole bonds creating a dipole moment in the molecule. You can be the judge. Now for the second molecule, again, we've got a trigonal planar molecule. There's a bond angle of 108, sorry, 120 degrees each time. Then we've got three bonds which are polarized. Two carbon to chlorine bonds with a dipole pushing towards the chlorines. And then there's a third dipole on the other side of the molecule pushing out towards the oxygen. The difference in electronegativity between these two atoms is much bigger than the difference between these two and these two. So the dipole bond here is much bigger and stronger. So we've got dipoles pulling in all directions. Two which are working kind of against each other, but also working in tandem to this side of the molecule. But their combined effect isn't as strong as the one dipole bond on the other side of the molecule. So these dipoles will sometimes partially cancel each other out. And because there's a stronger dipole on one side, overall there's still a dipole moment in this dioxide we looked at earlier. It is a linear molecule and it has two dipole bonds, a carbon to oxygen bond and then an equal, identical carbon to oxygen bond on the other side of the molecule. The dipoles are pulling in equal and opposite directions, and they will completely cancel each other out. So despite having dipole bonds, there is no dipole moment. There's no momentum and shift in electrons to one side of the molecule. Second example with the carbon tetrachloride, again we have four polar covalent dipole bonds, and they're the exact same kind of bond. And because of the tetrahedral nature of the molecule, the bond angles between each of these bonds is equal and opposite 109.4 degrees. So the symmetry of the molecule means that those dipoles are all pulling in equal but opposite directions. So the dipole bonds actually cancel each other out and there is no dipole moment to the molecule. So again, dipole bonds no dipole moment. Last one, the trichloral borane. Again, this high symmetry in the molecule. 120 degrees bond angle every time between each pair of bonding electrons. And each of these dipole bonds is equal in strength because we're using the same kinds of atoms. So these three equal dipole bonds in strength pulling in equal and opposite directions, the three points of a pyramid, there's a tug of war which cancels out. There's no momentum to these dipole bonds, and they're pulling in equal and opposite directions. So again, no dipole moment, even though we have dipole bonds. Prime state bonds. Now, for hydrogen, it's one electron, four for the carbon, and five for the nitrogen, so we have a total of ten electrons. A central atom is going to be carbon because it needs more electrons. We have a nitrogen and a hydrogen. This isn't in the whole one, is it? No. No, no something doesn't appear. Okay, good. So two, four electrons from a ten, so it gives us six more. And hydrogen doesn't need any more electrons. And we add them to the nitrogen before we add them to the carbon. We use up all of our electrons. The carbon doesn't have an octet. So we need a pair of electrons to make a double bond. Still not happy. So another pair of electrons to make a 
triple bond. Follow the charge, zero, zero, zero. When we look at these bonds, difference in electronegativities, hydrogen is 2.1, carbon is 2.5, so the difference is only 0.4. It's a non-polar bond. There is no dipole bond here. But from carbon to nitrogen, carbon is 2.5, nitrogen is, is it 3 or 3.5? 3. 3. So we're into that range for a dipole bond. And because the nitrogen is a more electronegative atom, when we show that dipole, okay, dipole from the carbon to nitrogen is pushing towards the more electronegative atom. We have a plus on the carbon side, down to plus symbol, and down to negative. And with only one dipole bond, there's dipole momentum, a dipole moment on one side of the molecule. Next one, just to make sure we don't run out of time, we'll draw it a little bit quicker. Carbon in the centre with three, car sorry, baby pardon, two carbon to hydrogen bonds and then two carbon to fluorine bonds. And again, as we look at the model, We've got just two polar covalent bonds, the carbon to fluorine bonds, a dipole bond. Carbon to hydrogen are non-polar. So as we look at those two carbon to fluorine bonds, those two bonds are on the same side of the molecule. They're slightly diverging and pulling apart, but they also partly reinforce each other on just one side of the molecule. And the second side of the molecule down below have just non-polar carbon to hydrogen bonds. So the polarization, the dipole bonds are converging on one side. And the sum of the vectors will give a dipole moment through this side of the molecule. And it does indeed have a dipole moment. Last one. Well, people get too edgy to stamp in. The sulfur in the centre. Basically, I, I use this black carbon again. We've got a non linear molecule with two lone pairs and two bonding pairs. And the two lone pairs generate stronger repulsion. And it makes a bond line go now just... 120. Not 120. Two lone pairs, much stronger repulsion. 104. 104, yes. And the electronegativities for hydrogen, we said it was 2.1. For sulfur, electronegativity is 2.5. So the difference in electronegativity is just 0.4. So these two bonds are non-polar. Without a dipole bond, there can't be a dipole moment. So dipole moment, dipole moment, no dipole moment because we're looking at non-polar bonds. Okay.